A micrometer. They all have names. They are not called a micrometer. There is a zero to one, a one to two, two to three, three to four, and so on and so forth. If you go to the tool room window, I will warn you now, and you ask for a micrometer, you might just get a micrometer. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me back today. Did he? Yeah. You asked for a micrometer? I asked for the wrong, he asked what it was for. Yeah. I told him the wrong size. Um, okay, so he's got a very large one back there, and sometimes you will get a micrometer. All right, so we've already covered all this. You guys know how to read the thimble, you know the sleeve. Um, that's just laid out flat, so you should be able to read that for the test. Uh, this is, should look familiar to you. I've explained the out of round and everything. What? Can you get those answers? Can you get those answers? There's no answers on there. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. There is a thing called a veneer caliper. That is what this is, a veneer caliper. Veneer calipers are not appropriate for measuring crankshafts. They're a great machinist tool. Um, I use them more for quick reference. There's veneer dial calipers and, uh, sorry, veneer calipers and dial calipers. I prefer the dial type. They're great for in my shop, we use them for reference work. We actually labeled them with the sticker said for reference only. We did not calibrate them. In, uh, our, in my shop, micrometers were calibrated at least once a year. So we would uh, not only have calibrated standards, it's called a standard that would go in here, and we would check them against the standard often. But once a year, we would have a guy in a big, big old trailer would show up, and he would go through and he would calibrate every micrometer, recalibrate every standard, and uh, do the whole shop. These we did not do because they just aren't accurate enough. They tend to flex a little bit. So they're good for machine, machinist work, but not um, what you're supposed to be using for measuring crankshafts and, and aircraft engine parts. There's your dial caliper. And I can do much time on that. All right, so my best friend here, T-gauges. I say that because I don't love key gauges. I think that they're fine and dandy tool. There are better tools out there. So T gauges can be very frustrating. But like I said earlier, you guys seem to be all right. You guys seem to be the best class I have ever had at using a T gauge. And I'm very serious about that. I'm shocked. Most most hey, even even that was like I don't know what happened. Uh, okay, so uh, there's some tricks to using a T gauge. And one of the things, uh, you notice how I got the silver set? They set this way. How do you guys set them like this, right next to the table? And boy, it doesn't make much. So I set them, set them over this way. Okay, sorry, you can't see over there. All right, so when you're measuring a cylinder, each manufacturer is going to tell you to measure a little bit different. And uh, I'm giving you a continental cylinder with the continental instructions, and you're following that. And really what we're doing, and we're not doing a whole set, uh, bore inspection. I'm having you do basically one spot. I think you even took the out of round out, didn't I? Okay, so normally I'm going to do one, then an out of round, right? So I'm going to measure here, measure here, here, then here. Take the difference. That's my out of round. And then i got to measure all the way down here. At, at down what would be the bottom when it's facing this way, which is really the top. Um, but I have to measure that because it's going to wear different. If it wears, if I measure it and <coughs> this way, if I measure it and it's angled up like that, it's called choke. And if it goes like that, it's called taper. Now, if you forget that, come up to me. I'll explain it to you. I will grab your neck and I will squeeze it. So it's tighter up at the top. It's called choke. And you're like, okay. No, I won't do that. It sounds like hitting the waiver, I think. All right. So, but I'm not having you worry about that. So I just want you to get the feel for this. In, the, in, in a production shop, I did not use these. I used an inside micrometer, which is actually a micrometer that if you would take this part off right here and all that's left is what you guys see, it has the carbide tip here and the carbide tip here, and you put it in there, and as you unscrew it, it's calibrated to read something. So I would use an inside micrometer, get a perfect measurement, I'm going to read it, then I'm going to set up a dial bore gauge. Gotcha, picture. Yeah, uh, 
I, I picked this picture because you can That's see it. Nice but uh, I have these for you. I'm going to teach you how to use them when you get into uh, engine class. But for now, you got to learn the learn the hard way, right? Learn to crawl before you can run. So I'll get an exact measurement. I'll set up a bore gauge. Like I said, doing that, there's no reason why you can't do a set of six cylinders literally in two to three minutes once it's set up. You just do it this way, do it this way, drop it, drop it, you get four measurements, you're done. So anyway, when you're doing this, and again, I can't believe I don't hear this out of this class. All the other classes, this is what it sounds like. Don't do that, it really is bad for them. So All right, so what I do, and I'm doing it backwards, is I start with it at an angle. All right, and remember, this is a very three-dimensional thing here. Number one, I've got to get it perfectly perpendicular. I have to get it in the largest part of the cylinder, and if I have it crooked at all, it's going to measure too big, right? So it has to be perfectly parallel perpendicular. and perpendicular, both. It's got to be parallel this way and perpendicular this way, and it's got to be at the largest apex of the cylinder, and it's got to be square. So I usually start off to the sides, I don't snap it, let it go in the middle, start crooked, and I measure where this flange is right here, this is the flange. I try and measure exactly the flange, because the book says measure about one inch down, that's about one inch down. So I can easily visualize that. So I will hold one end perfectly where I want it, bring up the other end until it's just in line with the other side. And what happens is when I'm actually pulling it up, and it's loose, and so I pull it up, it tends to want to center itself all by itself, find its own spot in the middle, all right? And so I bring it up until it's my best guess perfectly in line. Everybody follow so far? And then while it's in there, I'll tighten a little spring down, okay? And can take it out gently. But I don't stop there. I always want to stop and do a check. And this is the hard part for me to explain. So to do a check, what I do is I anchor this. I'm going to anchor, anchor the T-gauge towards me. And I'm going to see if I can make it go back through the cylinder. And as I do it, I should, I'm going to wiggle it back and forth through that circle and I'm going to find a spot where it only is barely going to fit through and it just drags a little bit and fits through in one little spot. Follow me? If you did it wrong, what's going to happen is it will fit anywhere in there. It fits all over the place and you can get it in the middle and like tink, tink, tink on both sides and you go, whoa, this is way too small. I didn't do it right. All right, so try it again. You put it back in. It's trial and error until you feel it anchor on one spot. Make it go through, and it should be one little spot which barely makes it through and drags through, and then you know, okay, I've got it. And so bring it out real gently, and then when you measure with the micrometer, I just tend to hold it like this. And bring it in and use a little clutch on there until it's just like you with anything else. But you have to be real careful. Sometimes I don't even trust the clutch on these uh, T gauges because the clutch will actually, it's, they're set so tight that it'll start squishing the T-gauge. So I bring it up until it just touches it, just a little peck, kissing your sister. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's Madagascar, man. It's a children's movie. <laughs> so, so, all right, so just bring it right in and just measure that. Follow? Okay, so for you guys, all you have to do is that one measurement just to get a T-gauge measurement. You don't have to do the out around. You don't have to do the choke. You don't have to do the, do the taper. Which choke? Tight. Yeah, it's tight. I was like, that Yeah. All right, so that's, that's T-gauges. Um, depicted up here are ball gauges. Those are full ball gauges. I like those a whole lot better than what we have, which are... Um, half ball gauges, they're not nearly as accurate. When you're measuring the guides, okay, so this is this is an aircraft cylinder. Maybe I should mention it. All right, aircraft cylinder. We have an intake side and an exhaust side. In past 309s, I've covered all this, but I was spending more time doing this stuff. I think it's better. This is the intake side. The intake side has less cooling, it's a cool side, it has less cooling fins. This is the exhaust side, it has more cooling fins because it's hotter. So that's how you can tell. Exhaust, intake. This one just happens to have a square intake, but that's not always that way. Then when I look inside, remembering that this is the exhaust side, this is the intake, the exhaust side has a smaller seat. The seat is the hole in there where the, the valve is going to touch. It has a smaller seat. 
The intake side has a bigger seat. But the opposite is true of the guides. These are the guides where the valve goes up and down inside. Intakes, generally speaking, have smaller guides, and the exhaust has a bigger guide. Now, the reason for that is, since we're talking about that, is it's the exhaust side is so hot. So you get extra cooling fins because it's so hot. And um, we want what's called volumetric efficiency. We want when the intake valve opens, the piston is coming down and it's drawing this fuel and air into here. Not the biggest hole you can get because it's sucking it in, right? But uh, when it's time to get rid of all those gases, the intake valve closes and the exhaust opens and the piston literally pushes it out. So you don't need quite as big of an opening, so make a smaller opening. Now the reason why the guides are the opposite and why the exhaust guide is bigger and the intake guide is smaller is goes back to the heat. There's so much heat built up on the exhaust side, you want it bigger because there's more surface area. More surface area means that you can transfer the heat <coughs> out of the guy. The intake side, you just don't need it, so it's smaller. Isn't that the low pressure on the outside that draws all the exhaust out of the piston? Okay, so if you want to get physically technical uh, in physics, yes. But, <coughs> well, <coughs> wants to talk about how the, air, the, the exhaust gas really comes in. You create a low pressure inside of the cylinder, and this, then the external pressure pushes it into, into the low pressure. But no, I'm saying oh. the exhaust goes out. The exhaust goes out. When the exhaust goes out, it's, it's not the piston that pushes it out. It pushes it out, right? Yeah, it is. It is the piston. Yeah, it is. I thought you said anything. Yeah, it's piston pushes it out. But, different glass. Right? But I guess so anyway, that's how you can do that. Oh, and guides wear funny. They don't like to wear right here, where you guys can see it. They wear back down inside here where you can't get to it. So really the proper way to do it is to take your ball gauge, get the right one, you pretty much have to push it in until it's near the bottom, about a quarter inch of a way. Now you can go up from the bottom too, but you can just do it this way. Expand it out until it just drags a little bit. And then drop it that way. Because if it's wearing like this, you're not going to go that way. Not without bending this. So, because it's like this, you're going to bring it down. Oh, about a little less than a quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch from the opening down here. Where it ends. Expand it out. Drop it through. Always catch it. Oh, all right. So if you can do that, you're on your way. All right, questions about T-gauges? You guys are the T-gauge masters. What else we got going on here? All right. So I think everything <coughs> else is...